Welcome back into the studio. Joining me right now is the spokesperson for the history of the Palisade, history of the Palisade wine, Ms. Priscilla Walker. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on, Ms. Priscilla. Or thanks for coming on, Ms. Thank, Priscilla. Thanks to you for having me. Yes, ma'am. So, Ms. Walker, uh, really quick, take a trip down memory lane for me. Uh, how did this group start? Well, the Palisade Historical Society started 12 years ago. We're a 501c3, um, and our mission is to um, protect and preserve and communicate Palisades history. We opened our the Palisades First History Museum last August. Um, we're open four days a week from 10 to 2. Um, we have a website, uh, historicpalisade.org. And tomorrow night we're doing a program, our 11th program, at the Ordinary Fellow Winery in Palisade, which is the former packing shed for the United Fruit Growers Association. So last December we did the history of fruit and wine part one. So tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, 202 Peach Avenue, which is just Second Street, keep on coming and park, um, 6 p.m. Um, it's going to be the history of wine part two. So, and the Lesnack food truck will be there at 4.30, so you can come early. Yes, um, the winery opens at uh, noon. So, and it's just a really enjoyable place to um, learn about Palisade history. It almost sounds full circle to me if I'm understanding you correctly. So you're, the event is hosted in the very first packaging ship, the very first packaging warehouse. It's not the first, but it was one of the biggest oh, and okay. it lasted the longest. Oh. Um, they, and in that building, they processed peaches from 1977 to the early 2000s. Oh, so uh, speaking about the history of the Palisade fruit, uh, what can someone expect when they're going to this event tomorrow? Okay, we're going to talk about um, the wine part of Palisade uh, fruit and wine history um, is newer. I mean, in 1963, there was a terrible freeze and a lot of the orchardists uh, lost their orchards and um, but it was the opportunity that Gerald Ivancy from Denver saw to get um, grapes into Colorado. Yes, he was right. tired of paying shipping <laughs> from California. So five, grape, uh, five uh, former peach growers became grape growers, wine grape growers, and now there are 43 wineries, or is it 34? 40, I want to say it was 43, what you told 40, me earlier. Okay, 40, yes, 43, uh, the number is growing. A couple more have opened. So we're, uh, of the state's 170 wineries, we have the most in a, in a location. With the best fruit, too, that grows and here. And the best, yeah, best tasting peaches. Well, our altitude at 4,800 feet is for sweeter fruit. The warm days, cool nights, and um, um, it just makes everything sweeter. The... Uh, grapes is measured in bricks, yes, so the, um, but yes, and we have most of the 800 grape, uh, acres of grape um, acreage in the state. Yes, it sounds like a plenty, sounds like plenty full that you, that you all will be covering in that event tomorrow. I really can't wait to go out there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for stopping by and educating the Western Slope, giving them something to look forward to tomorrow. I really appreciate it. You betcha. It.